I was born in Wingham, Ontario. I always thought of myself as a writer. I never considered anything else. And often people say, how could you think of, of becoming a Canadian writer? Because it was something that we didn't have very many of. But that didn't occur to me either. I just am a Canadian writer, uh, as I am a woman writer. And it's not something I ever think about. I'm not sure why I chose short stories in the beginning, though obviously I was, I was reading them a lot when I started to be a serious writer. But um, I always used to think it was a matter of time. I had small children and a household to keep. I couldn't imagine taking six months out of that. I could imagine writing hard for three weeks or a month and then getting caught up on all the things I'd neglected. But now, I have plenty of time to write. I no longer have these responsibilities, and I still write short stories. So I just keep on. An incident or an anecdote will have great importance to me, but I won't yet know why. It will seem like a story in itself, but it isn't satisfactory in that way. And then other things will sort of um, stick to it. It's as if you had this core and it attracts other elements which go to make up the story. Forgiveness in Families is another story that started with an anecdote. I've often thought, suppose I had to go to a psychiatrist. Well, he'd want to know about my family background, naturally. So I'd have to start telling him about my brother. He wouldn't even let me finish. He'd commit me. <laughs> Oh, now you're too hard on that boy, Val. Boy? Man. But remember, the Lord loves a lunatic. Nobody else is quite so special, quite so center of the universe as my baby brother Cam. Just call him a child of nature. That's what he called himself later on. I'll uh, skip over what he did between getting born and throwing up at my wedding, except to say that he had asthma and got to stay home from school for weeks on end. Oh, he could have been brilliant in school if he'd wanted to be. He's a deep one, that brother of yours. He's got some surprises for us. <sighs> she was right. He had. Cam lives with Mother now. He won't eat meat, only whole grain cereals and leafy vegetables. One day I was over there slicing beets, a, a forbidden root vegetable. I hope you understand. You're committing murder. No, but I'll give you 60 seconds to get out of here, or I may be. When I started to write, I was writing um, like Zane Grey, I think. Zane Grey was my first model. That was when I was about 10. And you know, he wrote westerns. And so I was always making up and writing down adventure stories, only instead of a hero. They had a heroine, which was me. Then, when I began, in a way, more seriously to write, when I was about 18, I was writing stories which imitated the short story writers I had read. Chekhov, Catherine Mansfield, James Joyce in Dubliners, uh, Sherwood Anderson in Winesburg, Ohio, things like that, all of which I'd read in the Wingham Library before I was out of high school. Well, when I went to the University of Western Ontario, when I was 18, I discovered that there was a literary magazine there. And from then on, the only thing that mattered to me at the university was to publish in that magazine. So I then uh, wrote a short story and took it to them, and it was accepted. This was my first publication. And uh, I might say my first notoriety, because somebody swore in the story. My first published story. And uh, my, my relatives didn't feel at all happy about it when it came out. But I felt very happy to be published. Hello? 
I think you should come over here and see if you can help Mum, Val. What's the matter with her? She's not feeling very well. What's the matter with her? Put her on the phone. I can't. Why can't you? I'm afraid she's passed out. Passed out? What have you done to her? Pam! Um, this is an emergency. If it's a good story, I want people to get a feeling from it, rather than to take away a specific meaning. And usually, uh, what bothers me is when someone has felt that there was a message in the story, and this is what the message is. And I would mainly just want to feel that somebody was reading the story and then looked up the way I sometimes do when I'm reading a story, and I look up and think, oh, yes. And I can't express what I've found. Uh, the things I enjoy reading most are the things where I stop all the time. And I think, oh, yes. You're not helping anybody. Now, I'm asking you to clear out of here. Better still, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. You're very mistaken if you think the tones of our voices are hurting or disturbing any sick person. Good Lord, who are these people? Well, uh, that's my brother and what you might call his friend. I'm not part of the ceremony. How's my mother? do we have to do to get them out of here? Turn the hose on them, one of the orderlies suggested. There's a long um, time between the conception and, and starting to write something. And the difficulty about this is that you can't really control it. And all our training is to learn to control things. We go to school and we learn how to study and we learn how to apply ourselves so that we can write essays and so on. None of this is any good at all to writing fiction. I just sit and drink coffee a lot and look at the wall or look out the window or go for walks, always feeling vaguely guilty because this is very unproductive time as far as I can see. And then... Uh, Either things pull together or they don't. You also have no guarantee that after all this process, you're going to wake up one morning and it's going to be there. I had one period during my life when I had a very definite writer's blog. Um, I was overwhelmed at that time with the gap between what I could actually do and what I had dreamed of doing. And then I had to become more realistic. And as I did, the shortcomings of every word I put on paper, of everything I did, seemed appalling to me. And finally, I became just paralyzed so that I actually could not complete a sentence on the typewriter. I feel very uneasy when I'm not writing. And even though I know now with experience that these periods will pass, I never believe it. I always uh, think that this, this is the end of writing and that I had better hurry up and find another career. I'm never in these periods quite myself. Hello? This is Dr. Rankin. Your mother is much better this morning. The next 48 hours will tell the story, and with, without raising your hopes, I want you to know that she is responding to treatment. And this is especially surprising 
in view of the fact she was late in getting to the hospital. Goodbye. Uh, the, 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 goodbye. I was glad, really, grateful, but underneath it all I was thinking, so, Cam didn't kill her after all with his, his craziness and carelessness and neglect and, and going out, he didn't kill her. And I was, well, sorry in some part of me to find out that this was true. And that really shocked me. Not whether mother lived or died, but what was so plain about myself that I could feel that way. I'm like everybody else. I like to do well. I want that to ordinary recognition. I want to walk into a bookstore and see my books there. And I always look to see if they're there. On the other hand, I know that this isn't really much of a measuring stick. It doesn't um, really change what I think about my work. But there is that um, comforting reassurance. Well, that boy of mine may not be very successful at anything else, but you have to admit that he has got a knack for saving lives. <laughs> Cam? I might take some of those uh, adult education courses. I'm thinking of becoming an accountant. <laughs> I was uh, thinking myself about changing into a different sort of person from the one I am. I do think about that. I read a book uh, called The Art of Loving. While I was reading it, a lot of things seemed clear to me, but afterwards I went back to being more or less the same. I mean, what has Cam ever done that, that actually hurt me anyway? And how am I any better than he is after the way I felt that night when Mother lived instead of died? This whole ceremony is pitched at a level which will reach and comfort the unconscious mind. And oh, yes, I was ready to take off into the wild market. blue yonder when Cam here, this idiot, came and danced outside my room with a bunch of his hippie friends. <laughs> my God, woman, they are members of an ancient holy discipline. <laughs> I, I had a strange feeling like I was walking on coals and, and trying a spell so I wouldn't get burnt. Forgiveness in families is is a mystery to me, how it comes, how it lasts. Writing is my pleasure, in a way. It's my pain, but it's also my great pleasure. And I'm so astonished when I've written anything that seems to work. I, I never have written anything that really satisfies me, but something that gets three quarters of the way there, I am so amazed that I don't ask, oh, why can't I do something different? 